now tell about the youth activism in Vietnam. Go ahead. Thanks, Naomi. Um, can we have the 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 uh, presentation, please? Um, good morning. It's great to be here. I wanted to share with you how activists in Vietnam are using their internet to uh, promote political change and then some ideas on how we can support internet freedom in Vietnam. Um, a few, you know, three very simple statistics to begin with. If you can go to the next slide, please. Um, the first thing is that the internet has grown very fast in Vietnam. I mean, today there are 26 million, well, over 25 million people using the internet in Vietnam. Now, that's a huge increase from just 200,000 people in the year 2000. So in just a decade, uh, internet usage has, has gone up over 100-fold. Um, another statistic is over half of the Vietnamese population is under 30 years old. So you can imagine with such a youthful population, uh, people are wanting change, they're not happy with the status quo, and they're also very uh, tech savvy. And then the third statistic to keep in mind is that in a country like Vietnam, the entire media, all the newspapers, the radio, the TV, is controlled by the state. So there's no independent media in Vietnam. So you can see how the internet has a huge potential for opening up this closed political system. And there are a lot of young activists, digital activists, using their internet to raise very important issues. And I just wanted to share with you some of these issues. Um, the next slide, please. One of the issues that people are talking about is official corruption. Um, because of the state media is unable or unwilling to report on a lot of the, 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 the big problems, you now have citizen journalists who are talking about corruption. And a group of bloggers created this site, and hopefully no one from the uh, Nokia legal department is here. Uh, what they've done is they've taken a pun of the word Nokia. In Vietnamese, Nokia means that guy or that person or them to talk about corruption. And this is a completely user-generated site where people uh, post online pictures of houses of high-level Commerce Party government uh, officials. So these officials, you know, typically make reasonable uh, incomes, but they tend to have very large houses. So these bloggers are now sharing with, with everybody uh, where these senior leaders live. So this is an interesting blog. Um, the next one, please. This is an, another watchdog group, and they're using Flickr. And what they have is they have pictures of uh, officials, and this, this gentleman happens to be the Deputy Prime Minister and uh, Minister of Education in Vietnam. And users uh, go under those, that Flickr page and post comments about these individuals, uh, about their business dealings, about their lack of credentials that they uh, pretend that they have. And this is another way of, of getting information out. Um, it's done very anonymously, and it's almost like a wiki concept where anybody can come in and contribute information, and then there's you know, critiques and, and discussions on, on what is, is raised. Another way that, uh, that bloggers are, are, are helping to disseminate information is they're talking about repression. Um, a couple of months ago, a very famous Vietnamese writer by the name of Jen Kai, Teng Thuy, uh, went to attend political trials of various dissidents. And then she was turned away by police and brought home. And that evening, uh, thugs orchestrated by the security police came to her home and beat her and her husband. But after they beat her, they arrested her for allegedly attacking her neighbor. Okay? And so in the next couple of days, government newspapers in Vietnam published this picture of this man, uh, of, of her neighbor, who they accused her of, of beating. Well, bloggers actually downloaded that picture from government newspapers and looked at the digital properties of the picture. And what they found out was, first of all, uh, there's a, a, a timestamp on this picture, if you notice. It's um, uh, the 9th of October, right? The 9th of October, 2009. But if you look at the digital properties, the picture was actually taken in 2005. Now, anybody can enter the wrong time under you know, a digital camera. That happens all the time. But if you have the wrong time, there won't be two, uh, two different times between the timestamp and the XF properties. It's just going to be one time. And if you look further over here, you can see that this picture was actually uh, photoshopped um, on the 9th of October around 5 o'clock in the afternoon, 17, uh, 14.08. So 5.14, it was actually photoshopped. So, so someone put the timestamp on that picture that evening. And interestingly, that timestamp was edited a couple hours before the attack. So basically, police found this picture, and they, they used this picture to uh, incriminate um, a dissident. Now, in the past, that information would have gotten out. But now, with bloggers as a watchdog, 
they've, they've been able to publicize this, and this has been used in the defense of this dissident. Um, the next slide, please. Um, so, you know, Vietnamese are using the internet to critique government policies, and one of the, the uh, I'm sorry, can you go back to the, the previous one? Oh, okay, the next one, I'm sorry. Okay, so they're, they're critiquing uh, government policies, and one of the big issues in Vietnam today are territorial disputes with China and the perceived weakness of the Hanoi regime in, in addressing this problem. So bloggers have been talking about this, and they've organized protests in front of Chinese offices um, and during the Olympic torch relay, and they use the internet to coordinate the demonstrations. And this is a picture of bloggers uh, in the central area of Saigon in the south, uh, you know, wearing the T-shirt. Um, designed by Reports on Frontier to uh, protest the coming uh, torch relay. Next. And one of the, another big issue in Vietnam is the environment. Um, there's an uh, ongoing effort by the government to mine bauxite in Vietnam's central highlands. Now, this has been extremely controversial, and there's a whole movement online getting signatures opposing this, this policy, and they have a website now that's got 20 million hits in less than a year. And the interesting thing is this protest movement has now moved offline uh, with, with little uh, small-scale protests. And one of the things that bloggers did was they designed a t-shirt talking about the environmental and security concerns of bauxite mining. And they launched a campaign to distribute these t-shirts uh, within society. So here are two famous bloggers who are wearing the shirt. Um, so, so this is a, one of the nice cases of digital activism translating to actually activities uh, offline on the ground. So um, that's what activists are doing in Vietnam. Now, the Vietnamese government is also aware of the power of the internet, and they would very much like to restrict the internet. But because of business needs and foreign investment, they have to keep the internet open. But that doesn't mean they're not finding ways to restrict the internet. Um, human rights groups have talked a lot about how bloggers are arrested, how firewalls are erected. Uh, but in the last year, uh, or more recently, the last couple of months, the government has, has taken two new approaches to restricting the internet. Um, next slide, please. One is they launched a block of Facebook. But interestingly, they didn't ban Facebook outright. They had ISPs um, restrict Facebook access of users. But neither the government nor the ISPs would ever go on their record of having blocked Facebook. The reason is because there's such a large community in Vietnam using this social network that they're afraid of the popular protest, the popular outcry. Um, if they, they acknowledge blocking it. So they just try to find ways to sabotage it, make people less willing to use it because it seems unreliable. But in response to this, uh, a lot of Vietnamese have found ways around the government restrictions. And there's a whole circumvention movement now helping people uh, uh, avoid the blocks. Uh, so that's, that's quite interesting. Uh, next slide, please. Now, the Vietnamese government you know, will firewall certain sites that they don't like but then people can find ways to circumvent that. So in the last couple of months, they've done something which is new and which is quite alarming, is they've launched hacker attacks against popular sites, popular with uh, people inside Vietnam, but they're hosted abroad. And this includes um, some very famous discussion forums like in Vietnamese, Dan Chim Viet, X Cafe, uh, sites of political organizations like Viet Tân, uh, our, our website, um, the box site Vietnam site. And so there are attacking sites hosted outside of Vietnam. Um, and so when they took down this site, they actually posted an announcement pretending to be from the webmaster saying, you know, we've given up the struggle. We don't want to uh, have a website anymore, so now we're closing the site. So they're, they're having these fraudulent postings on the website. So I think this has a lot of implications because now the authorities of Vietnam are not only restricting internet use of citizens, residents of Vietnam, but they're affecting, you know, netizens around the world who use these sites. So in conclusion, um, the internet is a, an extremely important tool, as we all know, right? And digital activism, the blogosphere, is really dependent on an, an open, free internet. So some of the things that um, we in Viet Thanh and uh, other Vietnamese uh, democracy groups are pushing for is to support internet freedom. So I wanted to share you know, three activities that we're doing, and I would love to uh, invite the participation of, of of you all in some of these efforts. The first is, um, the next slide, is the principle of internet freedom. I mean, ultimately, this is a human rights issue, right? People have the, the right to express themselves. And the Vietnamese government is a party to all sorts of 
uh, protocols on human rights. So we are going to uh, do our best to raise this, these issues, especially in the year 2010, when Vietnam is a member of the UN Security Council and is the chair of ASEAN. So there will be summits in Vietnam uh, hosted by ASEAN. There's the ASEAN meeting between Asia and, and the EU, which Vietnam will play a, a big role this year. So we will bring up the human rights obligations of the Vietnamese government and we'll advocate for internet freedom. Um, and along with advocating regarding the government, we'll, we'll also be working with other stakeholders like the technology companies and reminding them of their corporate social responsibility to uh, respect internet freedom. So that's one sort of endeavor. The second endeavor, the next slide please, is really launching a circumvention movement in Vietnam, providing uh, information through vodcast, uh, through uh, uh, documents on how to circumvent restrictions. And this is always obviously a, a evolving cat and mouse game, but to provide the latest information on web security and web circumvention to internet users in Vietnam. And if you think about it, uh, circumvention is really a 21st century mode of nonviolent struggle, of civil disobedience. If in the past people would have principal objection to uh, unjust laws by certain actions. Today, circumvention is one way that digital activists, internet users uh, can express their, view, their views. And then finally, uh, what we want to do is work for um, detained bloggers and internet activists. And three of the most well-known um, uh, activists in Vietnam happen to be women. Uh, lawyer Le Thi Cong Nhan, who was recently rele released from prison but is now under, still under house arrest and police harassment. Uh, writer Chen Kai Thanh Thuy and internet activist Pham Thanh Nguyen. And those three uh, women are really uh, the symbol of the Vietnamese democracy movement and a source of great pride for, for many of us. And on the occasion of International Human Rights Day, just yesterday, uh, we are uh, launching a campaign uh, for their release. And this is something that's gotten a lot of support from uh, uh, the diaspora community, from human rights groups, and also, very importantly, uh, among people inside Vietnam. Uh, we're, and we're working on advocacy efforts both on the ground and internationally. So those are a few of the ideas that we're working on. Um, thank you for your attention, and I uh, look forward to uh, the discussion. Thanks.